All right, hello, and welcome back to my RTS tutorial in Unity. Today, we are doing a little bit more on buildings. Uh, basically, last week, we got the uh, sort of base construction down where we could click on a unit and we'd build a building, which I've just realized that something has gone wrong. Uh, basically, I added uh, resource checking, so now, uh, basically, if we look at the prefab buildings, we'll see that they have uh, costs for how much they are in resources, basically. And if we click play and we go to, say, build buildings, we can now build a storehouse. And if you look carefully at the uh, bloody... Yeah, you'll see that it's gone down slightly. I don't know if you can... It's hard to see because the GOI looks kind of crap, but whatever, you get the point. Uh, second thing I added was if we have a worker selected that's not building it and we right click on a building that's being constructed, uh, that worker will now go and build the building. And what was the final thing I added? Uh, I don't know. What for that one? Oh well, it will come back to me. I wrote notes in the, uh, in, the in the script. I wrote notes for what I did, so I could remember. So yeah. Let's see how we did this. Okay, so let's go over what we did. Well, what I did. Uh, first off, easiest thing was add five uh, public integers for basically the cost in each of the resources that the building will take. And that's about it. That was just the public. Uh, so you can have a... So basically it's easier to set up in the inspector because if we just don't give them a value, they'll automatically get initialized to zero if we don't give them a value either here or in the inspector, which is good. Uh, first off, we added uh, some methods to take the, take a building and basically check if we have the sufficient resources to build it. So basically it'll return true if we can perform a resource check on all of the uh, resources with the to check dot cost. So that gets the two tech got cost gets the values from the building here and basically it checks them against uh, with this method the resource amount check that we made last time uh i think i also did uh more than or equal to because uh, last time it was more just more than so now it checks if all the resources are if basically sorry do fucking horribly right basically we've got a check for each resource if we've got enough We've got a method that takes uh, the resource name and the amount we're checking for. If we have more than enough of that resource, we'll return true. If we don't, we return false. And to be able to build a building, all these five checks for the five resources have to return true. And these aren't separate statements. It's just, uh, well, you probably know this, but you can uh, help spread the return statement out over multiple lines because the way uh, it reads it is basically the semicolon is the end of a line. So this laying out uh, the statement like this basically makes it a bit easier to read. And you can do that for stuff like that, uh, anything basically. And likewise, if I wanted to do this, like if I was some kind of deranged psychopath, I could have uh, the if statement all on one line. I could have the entire case statement on the one line. Yeah, I could do that. That's basically how the semicolons work. I just want to do that because it's horrible. And I got rid of my semicolon there for some reason. But yeah, uh, next one. Uh, we have a similar method, which basically just is called when we uh, actually build the building. So we do a validation check and then we construct the building. So basically we alter the resource value by the wood cost minus one. So we can use the same method for adding and subtracting values from the total resources we have. So as you can see there, it takes a string and a resource, a string for the resource type and an amount. And basically, we add the amount, but if we add a negative number, number it goes down. You know, maths, in it. Uh, that's all for resource manager. What was the next thing? Uh, uh, yeah, building store, we added a method that allows us to get the building script out of the currently selected building for when we're building. So if I just quickly go to uh, 
when we have a work selected and we're on build buildings, uh, this button, like it sets that uh, the temple to be the selected building, uh, storehouse, and you know, you get the idea basically. And basically, we have a method to get that script uh, just for, you know, if we want potentially wanted to build a building and we're checking a resource. And we set the value for current building SCR when we set selected building. So, yeah. We could have just done that, uh, you know, from where that is used. Uh, sorry. Because uh, that is used in the, uh, where is it, selection manager? Uh, it's basically used left mouse click script. So basically, we use it here when we are now using a check for if the resource manager of that common construct building, we get that script. The reason we do that instead of, uh, say, dot get components like building or whatever is because it's more efficient because we're only having to assign uh, to grab, use the dot get component method once rather than if we did it there, it'd have to do it every frame that we had a building in the sprite. But we had a building selected that we wanted to construct and we had the icon for the transparent building and whatnot. So that just makes it a bit more efficient. And then, because we do this check, if we don't have enough of a resource, uh, so say if I set the values to zero, 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 and we try and build a building, we can't, because so now it's red saying, yeah, I'm clicking, can't build it, so right click and select. Okay, now that's done. I think that was the first year. Yeah, so we've uh, added a check to construct the buildings uh, if we press mouse button down. And on the deciding the color of the cursor for building, so that's both two places where we use this uh, check if we can construct the building, if we've got the resources. Uh, here is where we call the method to reduce the amount of resources that we have by however much the building costs when we've clicked uh, the left mouse button here. And basically then we do all the, you know, calling, telling all the workers to go build the building where it is. And then I think there was one more change in the actual uh, building is on the spawn position. Well, once we've got it, we set the uh, spawn position to minus one, which, which, we do this because uh, if I just press play, actually no, I need a resource first. So uh, so if I press uh, play and we click build building, so we've got temple and we click pause and we go off 2D view for a second, we can see that uh, it's sort of there's a gap between the uh, build actual building here with its collider and the tiles behind it. Uh, the reason we say it's a minus one is so that when we're using the mouse's raycast to click on something, we know we've clicked on the building rather than say if it was on zero, it'd get confused with the tiles behind it. And it's a similar reason to why we did this. We did a similar thing for the units, so they are on. Minus two, I believe. Yes, minus two on the uh, Z axis. So basically, the lower the Z axis, the closer we are to the camera. Uh, camera is at minus 10 on the Z. So we have, to, like, don't we have enough layers. So basically, when we're clicking priority, is like uh, units first, then buildings, then tiles. And hopefully that makes sense. So yeah, so it just gives sort of priority to the breakcast. And we can differentiate whether we've hit buildings or tiles or whatever. Uh, done that, and I've also in the selection manager in no, that's in, in the unit order script. Uh, basically, we've added a check to see if we've right clicked. So, say we if we've got unit selected and we right click, it fires a raycast to the uh, mouse position, and if we hit the uh, building, uh, first off, we do a check. We get the building script off the object we hit rather than out of the uh, 
the building store because we've already got the reference to the object we hit. We might as well use it. And then the position is basically that uh, go-to tile, which is the tile on the bottom of the building, which I might actually change to be like a random tile on the edge. But first things first. Uh, yeah. Uh, basically, we check if for all of the game objects uh, selected, if the building is not built, so if, say, you just placed it and you wanted to assign more workers to it, we'd check if we could do the action, like add component to building, add, uh, we could build a building, and if we can do this, so if we can perform the action, so only workers can build buildings, then we send them to do that action, so they will go and contribute to the building of the building. And otherwise, it'll just move to that little tile below the building. And if the building is built, then it'll just move to the bottom of the building, that uh, tile. And there. Uh, what else? Last one. Oh, yeah, I changed the resource amount from more than or equals to to more than. So, yeah, that's it. A uh, short one, basically, because next time is going to be quite long, uh, I think, because I'm going to be adding uh, functionality to the buildings. So, so like building units, uh, stuff like that, you know. At least I think it is. I've not programmed it yet. But yeah. Uh, so, cheers for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all that shit. Uh, go check out my stuff on itch.io. I've updated Omega Station, so now it's got better world gen. And, yeah, generally looks a bit nicer. A couple of bugs fixed, you know. And go play loud or quiet, because... I had a fun time discovering that there was a bug because I forgot to add a scene uh, that basically meant you couldn't get past the first level. That is fixed now. Hopefully, you can play the entire fucking thing. Or as much as I've got on uh, AGL. There's still more levels that aren't being added until I add the uh, I get it on Steam, hopefully. So, yeah. Cheers for watching. Bye.